Hanish ethnic roots of the Turks and Ariels. That the Hans are ancestors of the Turks in the Turkology causes no doubts. Therefore it will be possible to not discuss here the Hanish ethnic roots of the Turks. But with the Hans are connected many ethnoses which in official historical science are recognized as Indo-Iranian. To reconsider these concepts, i.e. to prove the Turkic speaking of some the Hans neighbors, we have to refer to the Hanish ethnogenesis before the spread as a common ethnonym of the word Turk. The word Hunu Sun was widely apl applied as a common ethnonym uh, for the ancestors of many Turks. In the Russian historical science, the ethnonyms, the Hans and Guns are semantically different, but the distinction does not exist in the Turkic sources. There is used Han, Sun, or in alternate pronunciation, Sun. In the secondary composite ethnonyms, the word Sun takes various dialect forms San, Sun, Zan, Shan, Zhan, etc. In the Indian and Chinese sources, the ethnonym Sun in a formal Unu is recorded in 2nd millennium BC. Later, it is found in Eurasia, even in the west down to the borders of the northern Italy. The Turkish scientist Batin Ögel, who, is, who in 1981 published two volume work about the Great Hanish Empire, based on the analysis of the Chinese sources, writes that the Hans in 1500 BC were in a close contact with the Chinese, and among them were hunters, cattlemen, farmers, raised wheat and millet, but they were especially famous for their horse breeding. Apparently the Hans, still in the second millennium BC, had a state, otherwise, otherwise their Indian and Chinese sources simply would not mention them. But this most ancient period has not been studied yet. Historical science knows that the Hans created the first empire in the 8th and 7th centuries BC. The empire spread in the space from Korea to the Aral Lake, from the Siberian steppes and Tian Shan mountains to the Tibetan pastures and northern China. In the beginning of our era in the area of the river Orkon in Talas Altai, in the western Turkestan emerges the northern Hanish state and in the northwestern China emerges the southern Hanish state, which existed until the 2nd to 3rd century AD. In the 1st century AD, the internal processes split the state of the Hans. A part of them subordinated to the China, another com comba combating part retreated to the west where it mixed with Uyghurs and Sarmatians and turned into Guns. This notion naturally leads the objections for the Hans as an ethnos did not disappear, as thinks Gubilev. But they continued to live under the different ethnonyms to the Hans did not turn into Guns, i.e. into another people. And in the West, under different Russian terms, the Hans and Guns lived the same way peoples called by the Turkish-speaking peoples with their ethnonym Hun or Sun. Now we shall turn the attention the readers to the Hans or Suns of Europe, who in the Russian historical science are called Guns, by the L.N. Gumilev's summary. In the 70s of the 4th century, the Hans began a mass, mass movement, creating a push to the so-called Great Movement of the Peoples. Subduing islands of the Northern Caucasus, the Hans led by Balamber, a.k.a. Bulumar, crossed Don crushed 375 AD the Goths in the Antipontic and forced West Coast to retreat to Trace. In the 394-395, the Huns crossing the Caucasus, devastated Syria and Cappadocia, then they came to Pannonia and from there attacked the Eastern Roman Empire. The Hunnish tribal union has reached its greater, greatest territorial expansion and power during Attila time, ruled in 434-453 AD. In the 451, the Huns invaded northern Italy and Gallia, but in the Catalonian fields were defeated by the Romans, Vescos and Franks. After the death of Attila in 453, the Hunnish Union, sp Union split up. 
This, that is a brief legendary history of the Huns. It contains a mass of contradictions. If the Huns were only the nomads and had appeared in the Europe only in the 70s of the 4th century, they would hardly succeed in such prompt lightning attacks on the Eastern Europe, Western Europe, Syria, Anatolia, Cappadocia, in bringing the Roman Empire to the age of decimation. The real history cannot develop so luckily just for the Huns. Actually, the Turkic tribes under different ethnonyms spread across Europe still long before our era. At different times, some of them succeeded in taking a prevailing position, creating their state, and enter the history under their ethnonym. Still, among the Scythians, the majority of which was Turkic speaking, also were tribes named Suns or Huns who in the beginning of our era became become prominent and the Greek historian writers started to tell about them but not on one of them wrote that the Huns came to the Europe from Asia. On the contrary, they are mentioned as Aborigines. The Greek historian Dionysius who lived and wrote at the end of the 1st and the beginning of the 2nd century AD writes that in the northwest of the Caspian Sea live First, the Scythians who occupied the coast near the Cronian Sea along the mouth of the Caspian Sea, then the Uns and behind them the Caspians. Behind these are aggressive Albanians and Caducians who are living in the mountaineer countries. As is seen from this citation, the Turkic tribes recorded by Dionysus in the beginning of our era were widely distributed in Europe still before, before the, the our era. Of the tribes listed by him, everyone is Turkish speaking. The Scythians are mainly Turkish speaking. Caspi are Turks also. The it ethnonym consists of element Kas, which stands for rock, and P or Bey, Pai, is the primary Turkic ethnonym Alan. Aluan, Alban is the ethnonym of the Turkic tribes. Kadus is a Turkic ethnonym consisting of a primary ethnonym As, variation the ethnonym as. With the definition Kath, which as Kas stands for rock, Kadus that means as the aces of rocky mountains. Let's take another Greek historian of 2nd century AD, Ptolemy. He writes that in European Sarmatia, below Akathiris, Akathiris, between the Westerns and the Roxolans lived the Huns. In the 4th century AD, precisely when the Turks ostensibly migrated from the Asia to Europe, the Greek historian Philostorgius, the ecclesiastical history of Philostorgius, writes about the Huns, but not with a single word does he mention that the Huns came to Europe from Asia. These Anni, apparently the ancient Nerus, they lived on the Ripaean mountains where flows the river Tanaid. In second half of the 5th century AD, Zosimus classified the Huns as the imperial Scythians, and the Turkic speaking of the Scythian does not cause any doubts. Thus, the Huns located before the, our era also in Europe, only in the beginning of our era, appear on the scene, in, and in the 4th century they came to power, and the, and the rule of Attila, they consolidated the peoples of the Eastern Europe against Roman Empire and achieve its fall. In a common histor historical science, there is no unified opinion about the language affiliation, the Huns. There are some proofs of the Turkic speaking and of the Finno speaking and of the Mongolo speaking and of the Manchu speaking of the Huns. In last year, scientists came to conclusion that the Hunnish empires were created by the Turkic speaking Huns. But because in the empires lived Mongols and Manchurians and some finno ugrian tribes and naturally other Turks carrying other ethnonyms, then they all collectively subsequently received a common ethnonym as Han or Sun. The Turkish speaking of the Hun Hans is also proved by the fact that the ethnonym Han is the ancient Turkic language had the semantics of man and that the Chinese considered the people Turku, as standing for Turk, to be the descendants of the, Tur of the Huns. 
Some Turkologists are inclined to recognize that the Huns spoke an un uncommon Turkic language, such as Chuvash, but this opinion does not sustain any criticism. If the Huns spread in the huge territory from the Lake Baikal to the Balkan Peninsula, spoke a Chuvash-like Turkic language, then the descendants of the Huns, i.e. all the Turks, also would have spoken a Chuvash-like language. The Huns spoke the usual Turkic language of the Kupchak Oguz type. That is proved first by Hunnish phrase preserved by the sources. In the 4th century AD, the southern Huns conquered the northern China and the Hunnish leaders regard themselves as emperors of China. One of them, Shile, setting off in the 328 AD to a campaign, asks a Buddhist monk to predict the results of the campaign. The monk says, Suju Tilagian, Pugu Totadan. Scientists, scientists did not doubt that it was a Turkic phrase, but could not decipher it, even though in the same place is given its Chinese translation, the army will set off the Pagu, a name or a rank of the opponent, will, taken, will be taken. The Turkologist suggested a lot of variations of the Turkic phrases, but we shall not stop on them, we shall read it without any changes i.e. how it cited in the source. The first word, suju, in the Turkic, suje, leader of an army, commander, such as. The second word, tilagian, is uh, if, would want. Now, that's what it was saying, like, the second word, tilagian, stands for if, would want. The third word, pugu, is the ethnonym of a hostile tribe. Even in the 19th century, Kara Kyrgyzis had a clan Bugu or a Pugu. The third wo fourth word, uh, Tutadan, i.e. Tatugian, subjected, stands for subjected. It is rhymed with the word Tilagian, would want. Here, the affix Gan is pronounced as Dan. This is usual phenomenon for the Turkic language pronouncing the complete phrase once again with some minor alterations we shall receive Suja Tilagian Pugu Tatugian i.e. if the commanders of the army would wish the opponent Pugu would be subjected to a defeat. This semantics completely coincides with the Chinese translation in the source. Secondly, the Turkic speaking of the Huns is usually proved by individual words recorded in the sources the name Balamber of the leader of the Huns is of Turkic origin from a word Balam, my child. The second part, Bir, is give, deliver, or bear, only. In the name, in the name all that cons consonants uh, are sonorous, if the Hanish language was like a Shuvash type, there would be a palat palatalized consonants instead. The name Attila consists of parts Atti, a T T A Y, I mean, uh, or A T L Y stands for deserving or with a horse, and Il I L L E possessing a country. In Turkic tradition, the great personalities were renamed, and the secondary name sem uh, semantically should have reflected his social status. In the Turkic history, or the names. Atsus and Atti or Atli. Apparently, in the ancient times, the name Atli, A T L Y or A T T Y, meant having a horse with or as a with a horse. Then this semantics has extended, and A T L I Atli began to be applied with a meaning deserved. In the name of the Attila's son Elak, um, the affix as L-Y or T-Y is applied in its ancient full form as L-Y-K or L-A-K. Its root is IL or L-E-L-L -L, stands for as country. The second son of Attila is Dinsik, Dinsik or Dengitsi. This name is etymologized with variations ting uh, T-S-Y-K stands for be worthy or tansik stands for long awaited dengitsi stands for cross the seas 
the name of Attila's favorite wife is Kirke. Uh, and why Ashmarin did, uh, deduced it from the Shuash Herke, a pagan name. But a simple fact is the Turks their loved, uh, their, they loved uh, their favorite girls uh, were called Kerke or as Gobi, G O B Y. Thus, the Huns, i.e., the Huns and Guns of the Russian history, were the common Turkic speaking peoples and were one of the strong ethnic roots of the Turks, flourished in a huge Turkic area from the borders of the China to Carpathian Mountains. According to Andras Ronatas, is a Hungarian historian and linguist. He was born in 1931 in Budapest. Ronatas studied under such preeminent professors as Gyula Ortulay, Ortutai, Istvan Talasi, Gyula Nemet, and Lajos Ligeti, and received a degree in folklore and Eastern linguistics, Tibetan, Mongol, and Turkish. The locality uh, in which the Hungarians, the Manisha ER group, emerged was with was between the Volga River and the Ural Mountains between the 8th and 5th centuries BC. The Magyars embarked upon their independent existence and the early period of the Proto-Hungarian language began. Around 830, the seven related tribes Geno, Ker, Keshi, Kurt, Guyarmat, Megyar, Nuyek and Tarjan formed a confederation in El Telkos called Het Magyar, i.e. the Seven Magyars. Their leaders, the seven chieftains of the Magyars, besides almost included Elod, Ond, Kond, Tash, Huba and Teretum, took a blood oath, swearing eternal loyalty to Almos. Presumably, the Magyar tribes considered of 108 clans the confederation of the tribes was probably led by two high princes, the Kent, their spiritual ruler, ruler, and Gula, their military leader. The high princes were either elected by the leaders of the tribes or appointed by the Kagan, Kagan of the Khazars, who had been exerting influence over the Magyars. Around 862, the seven tribes separated from the Khazars. Before 881, three Turkic tribes rebelled against the rule of Kagan of the Khazars, but they were suppressed. After their defeat, they left the Khazar Empire and joined voluntarily to the confederation of Hatmagyar. The three tribes was organized into one tribe called Kabar, and later they played the role of vanguard and rear guard during the joint military actions of the confederation. With the joining of the three tribes to the previous seven ones, they became ten, which made them on or ten arrows. One of the possible origins for, uh, for the name Hungarian. To set this clear, Turks and Mongols are brother folks. They are both child groups of the Jungnu, an old splitted clan in the northeast of China. Modu Chonyu, also called Maudun or Metehan, as called in Turkey today, was the father of the Jonyu, Jiongnu Empire. The Chinese built the Chinese wall to protect their country from them. So Metehan is not Turkish nor Mongolian, he was a Jonyu. And Turks or Mongols are children of them. But the Turianian folk is originally a child group of the Turkish folks. There are two much groups which were original Turkish or Turkic. Today, the Turanians are mixed folk from Mongolians and Turks. So, you can't just really difference between the Turk and Mongol. It's almost the same. They live together after the split of Jonyu. So, a Mongol could be as easily called a Turk or vice versa. Hello there all and welcome to this Total War Attila. Finally, he has come out and I am about to do a campaign of my ancient people. Now, hope you all enjoyed that little, just little. I was just, I just started with that historical teachings. Now, hopefully you all understand a little bit the meaning of the Huns, who they were, um, where, they were where, they, where they come from, and uh, who their descendants to. And afterwards, I gotta say that 
they're also their predecessors were um, the uh, uh, tribe well they were first nomadic tribe and then uh, they established a great empire called Gokturks uh, Gokturks such as that and uh, that extended also a really large uh, amount of lands like really superb uh, great empire now the uh, the um, as I explained uh, the Hans are descendants of from the showing you as Chinese scripts uh, which they called my people but we call them the Hans as well like in the early days and the, the founder the founder of that empire was a great first great king called Mete Kahan now Mete Kahan is absolutely the legendary and it continues towards a lot of great legendary like such as Attila you know and so on like there's so many like so many so I don't want to go into many details and I just want to continue on the Hanik historical teachings but as I said if you want to do a historical teachings of the Hans you have to give out a little bit details about uh, their pre you know predecessors and also what happened exactly you know and, and all that so in that sense I, I gotta say I want to have really good uh, nice clean discussion like uh, if you wanna counterattack me you're welcome to do so if you don't believe what I'm saying if you don't believe that these Huns are actually my old people Turks if you don't want to believe that you don't want you, you don't have to you can stick to your um, so-called which I call them fabricated Western propaganda books you can stick to them it's no problem I don't care about that but me and many others knows that the Huns are my people the Turkish people well the Turkic people more accordingly so anyways I'm gonna start this campaign now and Oh, by the way, also there's also another uh, German historian in 1940s by the name of Frederick Hurt. He even he confirmed that the Huns were speaking the modern, not modern, uh, the old day Turkic language. Anyways, <laughs> let's put that aside. So you can see the religion here. I haven't spoken about the religion yet, but it is known to us that our uh, first of religion was Tengrism now this Tengri and Tengri was followed by the uh, Gokturks as well and many other Turks till uh, like till many uh, different tribes of the Turks decided to convert to either Christianity Judaism uh, or Islam so before that they all had the same religion called Tengrism all right now the aura of terror surrounding the Huns is so great that their enemies are barely able to concede that they are also human beings in truth. The Huns' queen expertise is what makes them such formidable foes. In battle their combination of ranged attacks and the speed with which they can cover ground is breathtaking and terrifying. To behold, in this way the Huns have swept into Europe and now threaten Rome itself. However, they must act swiftly to turn this chaos into an empire. Whilst their leaders' arguments rage, the horde waits paralyzed for the arrival of a man, a man powerful enough to unite the Hanic peoples and bind them to his singular will. Right? Uh, we're going not easy, obviously. Not normal. Let's do easy. Hard? No. Let's do either very, very hard or legendary. Only for the true hardcore manual saves are not allowed in campaign or this must cannot be issued whilst uh, okay, this one is not necessary for me but I do like to save don't know should I play as legendary or very hard now you know what I'm gonna go as legendary let's go to victory objectives here survive until the following date spring 425 raise or sack 25 different settlements reach 10 technologies how about this one cultural military Divine Triumph, okay, survive until the following spring for 450, defeat 40 different factions by capturing or raising their, oh my god, raise or sack 70 different settlements, maintain seven, 200 units in total, and then I gotta construct this settlement, oh my god, this is just too much for legendary campaign, I believe. Hmm, how about military victory? Wait, okay, there we go, Mili defeat 20 different factions, okay. Raise or sack 50 settlements, maintain 120, construct 4, research 16. Okay, this one 
Sounds pretty okay. So I'm gonna go on and do military victory. Alright. Or divine triumph. Oh my god. <laughs> Earn the following income from raiding. Mm. Oh man, this is so. Hmm. I think I'm gonna do military or cultural. We're not cultured. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I think I'm gonna go with military victory. All right. How about campaign settings? Yes, that's good. Show a uh, no off. I don't like to see them. But battle time limit. Let's go 40 minutes. That's enough. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Huh. Okay, it has to be realism. Okay, okay, so whatever. Let's start the campaign and wish me luck. Now, I have no idea. I have never seen any uh, previews of any uh, sort of like uh, help. So I'm just gonna go in and do my own thing. Hopefully I'll get some help from you guys if you watch this. And by the way, I'm gonna still continue, uh, as I said, on my historical teachings, like I'm gonna give out everything that I know and the facts that I'm gonna pro you know provide. So you can read in the description where I get my facts from. So if in case you all wonder, where do I get my sources from, you know? The air was filled with smoke and blood. The Huns gloried in the stench of death. They took what they needed and left their enemies to rot. Hands were free. They rode and fought and lived. Fear built Roman walls. They were right to be afraid. And behold, a red horse. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. Those with gold offered it by the wagon. The Huns took it and allowed them to live in fear, at least until they returned. of the four winds prayed to him of the eternal sky they made ready for war oh wow i'm so excited now that Hailing trailer from was the eastern steps yours is a life of constant movement and conflict your arrival has driven many from their homelands in fear. The Goths have fled southwestwards. Give chase, and you will find the fertile lands of the Eastern Roman Empire. The Vandals run west. There you will find the Western Roman Empire, weaker than its eastern cousin, but perhaps easier to exploit. Southeast lies the wealthy Sassanid Empire, ripe for plundering. Before you take on these supposed masters of the civilized world, you will do well to strengthen your position by subjugating the northern tribes. The world will dance to your tune, or it will burn. Nice speech. All right. They made ready for war. Cool. Objectives survive until the following. Okay. La la la. la. Sweet. Now, by the arrival of my ancestors, 
I already have ancestors over here. And those people were called Sarmatians and Scythians. Now, many people have given out really falsely information about my ancestors, Scythians. They think they're Iranians, but they are not. I'm going to give out exactly the historical teachings of that. Now, let me go and just give out some, some slight detail. Like, uh, let's say, Sarmatians were at disarray. Same for, goes for Scythians. They were also at disarray. They, had, they were leaderless, they were clueless, and they were like divided. When the Huns came in with such formidable force and a great leader, they saw the opportunity. Since they're also brethren, why else would they join? Like, come on, think about it. Why do you think it was so easy for them to join? It's because they spoke the same language, they spoke the same, they, sorry, they, they had the same religion, and, um, you know, they looked the same. So, why not join them? And that's what they did. They made a, a confederation, they joined in, so they were called the Huns afterwards as well. And why do you think it was so easy and, you know, powerful, like, army to just continue forward into Europe and, you know, do all this, all the things that they did. So, you know what I mean? Like, that's the lucky thing that they, they already had uh, ancestors living in here, such as, as I said, Sarmatians and Scythians. Hmm, now, where were we? Let's continue. Wow. Now, the facial, I wouldn't say nothing about it. I mean, it's almost, uh, like, accurate, so... I mean, even though they look a little bit more uh, as a Mongol, but, you know, the facials, like, uh, I don't mind, though, I mean, at least they don't look like uh, those, like, Attila looks really cool, like, so at least like, they don't look like in the previous room, too, like, uh, the retarded Scythians, like, fucking hell, man, they look like Ostrogoths or something, like, uh, that was, like, totally failure on my part, this I mean. enables you. all right, baby. Let's go with the financial first, yeah? Blood Brotherhood. Flexibility of the Horde. Huh. Okay. Now, the Horde goes where it will, taking what it needs along the way. <laughs> like, I really like that idea, though. I mean, it sounds really cool. All fear the approaching dust cloud that signals the Horde's arrivals. Hmm. Let's go with this one, baby. And then we continue. See, um, now, who are these guys? What are they called? Now, if I'm not mistaken, as I said, these should be called like Sarmatians or Scythians over here, like, but they're called something else, which is probably correct, you know, but... No, I need to be... God damn it, I need to get into diplomatic. In order and to construct a proposal, double click on th a There we go. You see what I'm saying? Sarmathia, there we go, baby. Like here we go, Sarmathia as well. But we don't see any like there we go. My gears, there we go. This is what I wanna show you guys, like a uh, really cool map though, I mean. Alright. Now my gears will come later, like not now though, like they will join my confederation later on as i explained that earlier in my historical teachings like and allens are also a part like one of my people and not my people as well so they're like kind of mixed up now some of these guys joined my federation many uh, didn't like me so they just fled westwards and joined the romans and there are also documentaries, uh, sorry, documents that they uh, joined forces on the Catalonian plains and fought against Attila and, you know, assholes. <laughs> now, it should be really easy to make these guys to join me, like... We will gladly listen to your offers, but do okay, this face lies. The is retarded. Truth. It's not... Why is that voice the same from Rome 2? That I don't get. So, marriage, okay, we can do marriage now, cool, um, join work, cancer trip, what? Okay, this faction is a tributary state of yours, okay, that's cool. So they already joined me, in some sense, like a little bit, some, could you call them vessels, maybe? Now, let me see now, you can see his age here, my age here, 
Uldin. Why did I say Attila first? I mean, Attila is not here yet. It's only... Well... Also another thing, uh, notice, be notice that Attila, uh, some say he was born 385 till 395 AD, but Western, uh, like um, Western, um, let's just say Westerners <laughs> say that he was born 4 405 AD, uh, which also is not entirely true, like... Oh, wait. Now I need to concentrate upon whom I'm gonna. I think I'm talking too much. Like, I don't even know who's my enemy <laughs> at this point. I mean, I do know, but I mean, I'm just gonna rethink my uh, position here. So, these guys are basically. Okay, they hate me. They hate my guts. So, that's good. Now I could easily destroy them, get in there. And these guys here. Wait, there we go. Mm, Tians. Good, they hit me too. So let's go and wage war against these guys and destroy them. Take their lands and all that shit. You know, the usual stuff. Who are these guys? Now, you see? What are they called again? Budinians, okay. Maybe these guys are ancient Scythians, like. And who are these guys? Now these guys are on the run, I believe. The long riders. For the climb. Mm, don't know though. I mean, For the climb. this is a friendly. Be brave. So, How can I help? So I got three armies. On our way. Yes, your on your way. I'm gonna try to attack that settlement. Hire mercenaries, baby. Oh wow, I can even recruit units here. Cool. I got a lot of horse archers, step lancers, step mounted troopers. Oh. <laughs> Let me see what that is. Alright. And Hanik mounted warband. So I don't have any uh, foot soldiers, which I do require if I'm going to take that siege. And this guy seems to be... Okay. Not that strong in this. I'm gonna go Fight and recruit some of these guys. Are you ready to do your duty? No. Seems like they don't. There's only three uh, maximum recruits. Mm. Let me go and... I'm gonna go over there. Journey completed. Who are these guys? Boss four of warriors, okay. So I don't have that many money, I believe. No, I got some. Ready for action. But weird enough. Hmm. Who are be brave? How can I help? Let I me go and recruit us. some more men here. Thirsty for battle. Let me go see. The this faction one here. summary. Oh, tab. this is my family tree. This is awesome. Hmm. Now you see, Khan. Khan stands for Emperor, baby. That's also in tur old Turkic language. Still, even today. And these guys are the princes, uh, I guess. Uldin, baby. There's all the daughters and husbands and whatnot. Let's go to. Oh, this is a strategic point of view. Well, I'm just amazed. Shut up. 
I'm just so amazed of uh, the beauty so far that, the you know... Tab. Shut up. I'm gonna take that away later. Uh, let me see now. Uh, everything looks so nice that, you know, I just wanna gain upon, like, gaze upon. Uh, I don't think I have any more. This Wait, list oh, there we go. Shows Dude, shut the hell up, man. Can I just remove it? Wait, let me see. There we go. No. Uh. Trespassing. Yes, we like trespass. Venidians. Okay, these are my three armies. For the gods. But uh, Ready for I'm kind of disappointed that we have so few uh, men in my uh, three units. Like, I should be like at least full. Okay, invited by Ostrogoths, okay. Those assholes killed my son, Mundizik. They decap decapitated him and sent his head to Constantinople where he could, where they showed in the forum, like, oh, my son. And that's a fact. That's what it, that, that's what happened. His sons were quite unfortunate, like, as character, Attila, he was a really, really serious figure. Like, he barely laughed, you know, like, barely at all, like, laughed. The only time he were, like, you could only see him uh, smile is is recorded when his son, eldest son, Munzik, uh, when he came into his tent, and then he had a, small, you know, a little bit of smile in his face, like, you know, that could show him, like, a happy moment, like, but other than that, he was like really super serious, like character. Like uh, you should like take heed to your words when you spoke to him, and uh, he was also a very fair leader. Like you know, that's the thing. Like he uh, despised the Roman way of life because he saw the corruption in it, and that's what something um, the Huns were not familiar with. Like loyalty and you know. Like order and stability was everything, you know, in the realm uh, for the people. Like, and when he sees that Romans, the way they act, like he totally despised it, and you know that's why he, in some sense, uh, he punished them. Like, Ready so you had to be like really serious if you want to have a conversation with him or anything like that. Like, so let's go ahead and. No, I was gonna say let's we go ahead and attack. Us. God damn it, I can only Fight. create two. Make your ancestors proud. Make your ancestors proud. Let me see now. Now there we go. Okay. Okay, they got quite a few men over there. So I have to we need good fighters. recruit my only two shit, man. Billion weave? Hmm. Oh wow. Okay, this I didn't know. Then why the hell am I attacking now? Like, I should like totally... Eh. You see, it's something new I learn all the time. Like, this is something new. And I, I reckon I should create something here. Like, nomadic host, baby. And it cost me... No, wait, no! What did I do now? Wait, hold on. Hold on! I need to see. Construction site. So we get. Right, you can't build this one, okay. Cannot build, why not? That's weird. 
convert what do you mean convert hmm dude I'm so freaking confused over here like should I like create oh this is like dismantle like no I don't want to dismantle huh that's the thing though I mean uh it follows you like this tense, you know. This is how we used to, you're supposed to, you know. This is how we used to live in, like. And it's true. I mean, they, that's the way of nomadic life. So, this is excellent, man. This is awesome. No, you said I couldn't build it. Why do I build it then? That's weird. Anyways, uh, man, I need like soldiery. And which one are those? No, I don't want... Step mountain, okay. I'm gonna go with this one. Perfect. For the gods! For the gods! Hey. Amen! Okay, uh, can I make... Diplomatic... With this... Oh wait, what the hell did I do now? Hey man. Shit, where did it go? I, I did something, I don't know what the fuck I did, man. Come, it's just... sit, share my fire. No. Okay, where did the thing go, man? Oh, the same game. Chat. <laughs> I totally dismantled the thing, like... Oh. I'm gonna try to no. Okay, no, 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 no. No. Man, you for real? Like, what did I press? I did press something, but oh. There we go. Tab. <laughs> Shit. I was like worried for a sector. Like, what the hell is going on? Like, so diplomatic stance, baby. Yes, there we go. Okay, who the hell are you guys? No, not you. I can't see the. Uh... Unfortunately, I can't see them. <laughs> These are the. Uh, I'm guessing that these guys are Scythians. And they seem to be invading those lands over there. Be How can I... For the crime. <laughs> we need good fighters. Let's go. Recruit some more Ready for battle. soldiers. Like, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. <clears throat> These guys are sword units. I mean, they look really uh, weak units compared to these ones. Come, I mean, fight for us. so let's go recruit that one instead. Hmm. Mm, let me go and there we go. Thirsty for battle. Hmm. Let me go and do. Let me see. I got plenty of food though. Like income is really low though. <coughs> So we go and do, no, wait, 200 wealth, that's 200 wealth. I'm gonna go with this one. Alright, that's the end of this part. Uh, since I made a 
really long uh, historical teachings at the beginning. It took quite a while, minutes there, and I can't have more than one hour, I believe. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, as, as, as I told you guys, like I'm always open ears to criticism. And um, if you have like counter proof, like I would really like to hear. But you know, if you're gonna counter prove me, then you have to bring your sources. Like prove me that I'm wrong or join me in my hordic empire so to speak like <laughs> now i don't mean to be like rude or anything like that you know all is welcome like even though you know these guys were my ancestors they were turks but that doesn't mean that later on that we recruited you know other folks into our army like such as germanic people slavic people you know and magyars or you know this and that so as i said if you are an ally and uh you know yeah let's just say if you are an ally and yeah then you're always welcome to join my confederation and if you're not still i respect you uh, be at mind that i do uh, like i always liked i always thought good about any other you know um, like uh, uh, factions like such as rome or whatever like i always have been interested in history like so i just want to give out the correct history rather than the false one so you know if this was rome i would totally speak about rome i mean why would i give out false information about romans or persians or barbarians or etc so you know what i'm saying so this is just a my humble teaching and i'm i would be really honored and glad if you guys took heed of my lectures so Give me your thoughts and I'll see you at part two. Take care people. That's not a good sign. And he's barely taking so much losses. Ah, screw you then. Oh man. Okay. Progress 15%. Oh, that's nice. HQ sent us reinforcements, including an armored vehicle.